Hi. My name is Andres, I am a senior engineer from Microsoft. I am glad to join this Quectal and ST Microelectronics Masterclass. Adding connectivity to an embedded project is complex and always a challenge. The embedded wireless framework has been developed to help you. It is now publicly available on GitHub, under an MIT license. The embedded wireless framework gives you the power to write your application using a common API, and use it with different network adapters, host interfaces, software platforms, and hardware. For example, you can use a Quectal BG95 or BG96, connected to your board using UART, USB, or another interface, use an STM32U5, STM32L4, or another board and build on top of Azure RTOS, Free RTOS, Bare Metal, or even Windows during development and testing. You can write your application code once and run in any combination of the mentioned components. Your application does not need to know about the internals of the EWF, just use one of the available APIs for connectivity and you can focus on your own application code. Today I am going to show and demo a set of example projects, running on STM32U5 Discovery Kit and the Quectal BG95 Cellular Modem Arduino Shield. These two boards are available for order. All examples are in the examples directory of the repository. There you will find a subdirectory for the STM32U585 discovery board using the STM32 Cube IDE, based on the GCC toolchain. This directory contains many examples. We are going to use the ones based on ThreadX, with the Arduino Shield BG95. These examples have the suffix, tx, underscore, bg95, underscore, shield. These examples have been developed using the STM32 Cube IDE. You can download it directly from ST Micro's website. To start, clone the repository into your preferred working directory. The repository uses submodules, remember to initialize and update them. Start STM32 Cube IDE on the examples STM32U585 Discovery GCC directory. Import the projects into STM32 Cube IDE. You can import all projects, we are going to use only a few of them in this demo. There are four examples in a set we are going to focus on, Info, Test, Certs and Telemetry. We are going to look at each one in detail. The Info example queries and shows the network adapter information. It is the first example you should try, to verify your hardware is working correctly. Before running the example, you will need to build it. Right-click the project on the Project Explorer and select the Build Project menu item. This will start the build. You will see the build progress in the console. This will take a few seconds. Make sure that the project builds successfully in your system. Plug a micro USB cable to the STM32U5 board ST-Link connector, and the other end to your PC. You will see an LED turn on. For now you will need to power on the BG95 Arduino Shield board manually. Press the power button for a second, you will see the other two LEDs turn on. To run the example, right-click on the project in the Project Explorer, and select the Debug as Submenu, and click on the STM32C slash C++ application item. This will start the debugger. Make sure that SWV ITM Data Console view is open, so you can see the output from the application. 
If this view is not open you can find the Window Menu, Show View, Sub Menu. After the application finished collecting and logging to the console all the adapter information, it will show a Done message. You can review the output in the console. You can stop the example now by pressing the Terminate button in the toolbar. This example uses the Azure RTOS Thread X, but is very simple, it only has one thread. Remember the embedded wireless framework can run on an RTOS, bare metal or other platforms. Let's take a look at the EWF code in example. The example has commented out code for powering on the board that you can include at your convenience. Then the application declares an allocator for handling memory used by the EWF. It declares an interface to communicate with the adapter. It also declares the adapter. This is the Quectal BG95 cellular modem. This adapter pointer then can be used to call other functions in the API to initialize the modem according to your application needs. You need to start the adapter. This is the first call you have to make after declaring the adapter and before you can use it with other calls. Then you can enter a PIN number for the SIM card, if required. You can set the ME functionality, or call any other initialization required by your specific configuration. Once the network adapter is initialized, you can call the info function to query and log the adapter information. When this function returns a message is printed and the application goes into a loop. The test example application is very similar. It performs the same declaration and initialization of the modem, but then it calls the adapter specific self-test function. You can build and run the test application in the same way. When you run the test application you also see its output in the SWV ITM Data Console view. The test application does use different APIs to communicate with servers on the internet, send requests, and get responses. When the test application finishes, it also shows a done message. There is a readme file in the tools slash cert scripts directory. It contains the necessary instructions for getting you started, points you to the instructions for creating an IoT hub, creating a device, generating and validating certificates, and generating the corresponding header files. The scripts necessary to accomplish these tasks are available in the same directory. The instructions describe the steps necessary using the Azure portal, but you can automate these using the Azure CLI. Once the generated certificate and key files are copied into the yuf underscore certs underscore tx underscore bg95 underscore shield, you can build and run the example. This example will save the certificates and keys into the bg95 modem. You need to run this only once to provision the device, and if you want to update the certificates and or identity. The telemetry example will connect to the Azure IoT Hub using the credentials generated, registered and stored in the previous step. Before you build the telemetry example, update the example configuration in the file yuf underscore example.config.h. Make sure the IoT Hub hostname and the IoT Hub device ID match the ones you used in the previous step. Now you can build and run the example. The example runs for an hour sending telemetry messages every second. You can check the progress in the SWV ITM Data Console view. You can also use the Azure IoT Explorer tool to connect directly to IoT Hub and monitor the telemetry messages. Once the data is received by the Azure IoT Hub you can use the full power of Azure to create insights based on this data. There are two projects provided as examples, 
a simple project that sends dummy telemetry data, and another one that uses real sensor data. Remember that you can download the EWF and example projects from GitHub today. Get in touch with us if you have questions, ideas, comments or any other type of feedback. Thanks for listening.